You know, here's an interesting concept. Now, I've done this Andrew Discusses video series at least, what, eight episodes so far? And I've never actually thought about this. But why not do a small little mini-series type of episode? It's a four-part one, if you will. And that's honestly what this is going to be the start of. Now, I know, I know, I know, but Andrew, you put this up every other week. Yeah, think of me like Defunct Land, but a lot more fun. <laughs> anyway, this time around, I'm actually going to be discussing something that we can all take to granted. And honestly, it doesn't just affect anime, but other things as well, including television shows, movies, as well as cartoons. So, sit back, get out a pen and pencil, or paper and pencil, or just sort of ready to type away on a notepad if you have to, and take notes on this. Because this time around, I'm giving some ideas on what makes, well, anime, what would make a good anime, basically. And we're going to go over the plots of this. Four separate videos for four different things. And those things are, so you know what the title of each one is for future reference, intro, plot, summary, or characters. Oh, wait a minute, that actually kind of sucks. Um, intro, definitely. Um, summary, def well, plot slash summary. Characters. Hmm. Oh! Animation! That's what it was. Those are the four things. Intro, plot slash summary, characters, and animation. So join me, if you will, on this four-part adventure as we dive into the wonderful world of creativity. God knows I don't have any of that. At least, I don't think I do. Alright, so let's start this off with the main point. Now, I know a lot of people are going to go, but Andrew, characters, a plot, art style and that, those are more important. Yes, they are, but I'm more interested in the one thing that's going to grab the attention right off the bat. And, honest, and in all honesty, we're going to be touching everything anyway. There's no particular order in which this is going to be happening. I just named four things at random. But, basically, what we're looking at here is the introduction. Now, I know a lot of people, like I said, are going to be going, I'm not going to watch this because it's not going in the right order. Well, here's the thing. Coming up with different ideas further down the road is how I work. I'll come up with a plot, characters, and then down the road, I'll come up with a design for said character based upon how my story's working. But I'm going to start off with the thing that always gathers my attention first, and that's the introduction. Now, I don't just mean the introduction to what you're working on. I mean the introduction to your final product. So, yeah, we're working ass backwards here, but still, you get the idea. Anyway, here's the fun part. Now, think back to your childhood. So many memories ago, I know, but let's think back there for a moment, shall we? Remember all the times you were watching a Saturday morning cartoon or just a program, a movie, or anything in general, and you heard the iconic tune of it, be it the Avengers theme or the tune for uh, Centurions, Looney Tunes, We Bear Bears, Adventure Time, uh, Rugrats, Doug, Pelswick, As Told by Ginger, things like that. Remember that. Because every time you heard that, how quickly did your mind register that you had to move your ass and move your little butt to find a seat by the TV? Probably often. And this actually goes back even long before television with radio programs that did the exact same thing. The opening intro would be what would gather kids' attention and have them immediately come flying from wherever they were, plopping their butts down in front of that radio set. Yep. Now, why is an introduction so good for this? What is in an intro? Well, that's the fun part. A lot. Now, sure, there are some intros that suck ass, and I'm not going to name names here, but uh, <clears throat> One Piece. <laughs> Sorry. But they are things that definitely make an impact. 
You want to have an introduction to something that is tremendously good, memorable, and one that will stick into their heads. Think like those crappy commercials for a low-grade car dealership or for a business. They have a catchy jingle because they want you to remember it. Take me, for example. I constantly made a joke at work that I should open up a place called the Hammock Hut. I even came up with a jingle saying, come on down to the Hammock Hut. Yeah, come on down to the Hammock Hut. Just come on down to the Hammock Hut. And put your butt there. Now, in all honesty, you put that to music and catch enough tune in a jingle, it'll get remembered. The same thing can be said for, well, the Gordon's Fisherman theme song. You know, trust the Gordon's Fisherman. Or San Francisco, the Rice-A-Roni, or Rice-A-Roni, the San Francisco treat. Uh, M&M's, branding, stuff like that. Having some type of an introduction, either a theme, a saying, or something that sticks into people's heads is a good way to remember your series, your show, or whatever it is you're working on. Take my Andrew Rants videos, for example. When I constantly say at the start of all of them, Welcome to Andrew Rants, the video series where I stand upon my metaphorical soapbox pedestal of the world. It's something that you can remember because I say it all the time. I always say that phrase, where I stand upon my metaphorical soapbox pedestal of the world. Now, that can be misconstrued multiple ways, but I'm not going to get into semantics here. That's not what I'm here to do. <laughs> no, no. But anyway, an introduction has to be catchy. Now, a majority of television shows, unfortunately, nowadays have foregone the traditional introduction in lieu of just throwing it out to the wasteland. It sucks that they've done that, but I understand the concept of it. They want to save time and get advertisers happy. Although, with television going the way of the dodo bird, <laughs> they might as well just give up at this point. But there are still some shows that do have catchy openings. Fact to be, I'm going to reference one now that a lot of you may not have realized just recently ended. Star vs. the Forces of Evil. Why is that catchy? Because the song sticks in your head. The beat sticks in your head. And you know when you start hearing the do 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 you know what's going to be coming. You know that coming down the pipeline is a great show, something that I have to watch. Yep. But... Like I said, that isn't always the case. And a majority of the time, something does prevent you from watching it, or you just don't want to care anymore. But, the good intro sound is only one half of it. Now, granted, anything can sound good, but you have to have something visually pleasing at the same time to grab their attention. Now, this doesn't work for everything, but if we're going to be talking about a cartoon, or an anime, or a TV show... It would be a good idea to kind of have something along the lines to grab their attention. Yes, I know. This often can be more, what's a good word for saying, confusing and time constraining. Well, there isn't. It's mostly a pain in the ass. However, it is a necessity. For most cartoon shows, they just show small snippets of the characters walking around to whatever the tune is, doing whatever they do best. If it's something zany and wacky like Star vs. the Forces of Evil, they're going to show some of the zaniness that's in the show. If it's something like We Bear Bears, they're just going to show the bears like they are hanging out on an everyday basis. If it's something like Centurions, they're going to show what they do. You're supposed to basically make the intro sort of like a commercial, a very, very short commercial. About one minute max. It's about the good point for an intro. Unlike One Piece's almost two minute theme song. Seriously, I have a beef with that theme song. It's not doesn't fit the anime that it's part of. I'm sorry. Anyway, what's interesting about it is the fact that if you do it right, an introduction can actually help your show a lot more than hurt it. A good example of this would actually be Dragon Ball. Remember back, I know it's an old show, but still, think back to that intro, or just look it up online. An intro like that grabs your attention. It tells you about the story that's unfolding, the background of the story that you're about to listen to, and in all honesty, could get you hyped and pumped for what's about to come. You want to build the energy up for whatever you're pitching them. Granted, the characters and everything else we'll go over later on, but... Think about that intro, because that's what you need to focus on, because then the rest of it can fall into context, so it works both ways, either forwards or backwards. If you think of a decent intro, then you can base your characters off of what your intro is trying to sell. Like I said, small commercial. It better the commercial, the more views you'll get.
the more, well, interesting of a time you'll have. Even YouTubers do this. Well, not all of them. I don't, unfortunately, because I'm limited by my technology. But you get my point. The majority of YouTubers actually do have the concept and the structure and ability to create kick-ass intros. Look at the Angry Video Game Nerd as a prime example. Some of his introductions were quite good. All going to his theme song. Even some of the older ones were just plain, but they fit the time and the style that he was doing. Some other channels that do similar intros, like K-Wing's Let's Play, or, dare I say it, other things, not even going to go there, actually do have the same construct and the same sim the same symmetry, symmetry, or symmetry, however you want to say it. Well, it's symmetry, I had it right the second time. As the feel for it, but they don't have the same grabbing attention. Sure, it's going to grab the attention of somebody, but then whatever they're pitching after it ends had better keep their attention. Otherwise, pfft, right down the crap where it goes. Cartoons have done the same thing. A perfect example of this, I'm actually going to say, is the Flintstones. Because their whole theme song was, you know, meet the Flintstones. They're the modern Stone Age family. I gave you a second there to think if it See if you could remember it also so my brain could kick in the high gear there. You know, they're the modern Stone Age family. So they pretty much gave you the introduction to the series while introducing the characters at the same time. Even the Jetsons did this. You know, meet George Jetson, his boy Elroy, daughter Judy, and Jane, his wife. The only one they didn't introduce was Astro and Rosie, but they got episodes dedicated to them anyway. Well, at least Rosie did. I don't remember Astro getting one. So the characters were introduced. So we knew who the main cast was. So we knew what we were getting into. Now, other shows have done the same thing down the road, especially The Centurions, another one of my personal favorites from way back in my childhood. They actually explain not only the premise of the show, the idea behind the show, but the characters in the show. Max Ray, Ace McCloud, Jake Rockwell, and Skyvolt, as well as Doc Terror and his cyborg companion, Hacker. Johnny Quest even did the same thing. Granted, the original Hanna-Barbera version from way back didn't, but the real adventures of Johnny Quest kind of did a unique way of this. Now, they didn't flat out introduce the characters telling you who each character was, but what they did was one thing better. And that was simply that they gave you a kick-ass intro that would make you remember the series. Now, not every series and show has to have an intro like this. In fact, you could just do a plain intro if you want, and just so long as whatever you're pitching is that good. But it's something to keep in mind. If you want to show off how cool your project is, it might not be a bad idea to consider spending a little bit of time figuring out a decent introduction for each episode. Now, I don't mean make them each individual. That would be borderline horrible. I mean, you know, think about it logically for a minute. But if you figure out a general theme, keeping to that theme, then stuff like that could actually work. But you never know. In all honesty, at the end of the day, that's what it boils down to. However you feel about it. Now, granted intros, uh, granted, intros and intro themes and that are sometimes glanced over and, if binge-watching, completely ignored. Look, I'm not going to lie, I've done that myself. How else do you think I've gotten through so many anime series? I binge watch those bitches. <laughs> the only way you binge watch something is you gotta skip the intros and the and the end credits. <laughs> you just focus square on the meat. It's like a sandwich. In this case, I'm avoiding both slices of bread and diving straight into the meat buffet. If you will. Yes, I know. But either way... An intro is definitely something to consider if you want to create your own project. Now, I am by no means an expert. I'm just giving a general idea. I'm not saying that I'm good at what I do. God knows there's people better than me. I barely got 100 subscribers. Yeah, I just barely am over 100. So, woo! But seriously, it's something that you could consider for the long term of things. And in all honesty, it could in fact be good or bad. Oh well. But next time, we'll touch into something that definitely needs to have a tremendous amount of thought put into it. And a tremendous amount of thought indeed when we dive into the plot and the summary 
for whatever it is you're working on, be it a story, an anime, a cartoon, a movie, a TV show, what have you. The story and the plot have to have a good point. And we'll talk about that next time here on Andrew Discusses. Thank you all for tuning in, and until next time, to be continued.